As Monster Hunter players, a lot of us like to stick with what we know when it comes to games within this genre. In the past, many games have come along within this genre that attempt to create some alternative options for the audience, with games like God Eater and its sci-fi style, or Dauntless and its more broad appeal approach by being free to play and available on a lot of platforms. Well now we have a brand new name stepping into the hunting genre, with Wild Hearts. Wild Hearts is a massive hill to climb, as most of us already have been playing Monster Hunter games for years, and built up habits based on the gameplay mechanics that we know and love in the Monster Hunter series. So whichever Monster Hunter game you started with, you're probably going to be quite familiar with the different mechanics and gameplay of it. So when a new game comes along in the genre, it can be quite daunting to get to grips with it, because it's going to change some of the things that you already know and love. So in today's video, we thought it would be a good idea to share some tips or observations for us Monster Hunter players that are looking to get into Wild Hearts, which hopefully will make this transition a bit smoother for you. Some of these tips are more subjective, but they are what we experienced with our 60 plus hours of hands-on experience playing Wild Hearts. Talking about alternative monster hunting games though, let us know what your favourite non-monster hunter game is within this genre. I'd love to see what you guys have been playing. And you can support this video by clicking like down below and subscribing because we have plenty more videos like this coming for you guys very soon. Let's start off with Monster Hunter traps. They're probably something that you've gotten quite used to using while hunting. Well, these don't exactly exist in Wild Hearts, so getting a breather mid-hunt to output a good chunk of DPS is something that you may initially miss. Well, instead of having pre-crafted traps and prepared items, Wild Hearts does it a little differently with a system called Fusion Karakuri. These function as mid-combat buildings that have a variety of useful effects and interactions with the monsters. Things like the harpoons and chain traps function similar to shock traps and pitfall traps within Monster Hunter. This gives you a great window to attack, while other fusion karakuri like the bulwark will give you a chance to be shielded while healing, reviving a teammate, or when a monster charges at you. We haven't actually found any normal monsters within the game that these traps don't work on, whereas in Monster Hunter you have things like Elder Dragons that you can't trap. So in Wild Hearts, make Make sure to put them to good use. Next, let's talk about the weapons and try to match them to their Monster Hunter counterparts in terms of playstyle. But do know that while some weapons look visually similar to something in Monster Hunter, they all do play quite differently. The claw blades are a mix between the insect glaive and the jewel blades, so if you play either of these weapons, you're going to feel pretty at home here. The Nadachi is for the majority part the same as a greatsword, but it has mechanics more similar to the bow where you need to manage your stamina to deal more damage. We would say this is definitely one for the greatsword players out there. The Bladed Wagasa is the one and only weapon in the game that can parry, so this actually functions more like the longsword in recent Monster Hunter games, with a heavy focus on parry gameplay. The Hand Cannon is an even more stationary heavy bowgun, but this time has a giant laser beam that does incredible damage. The Karakuri Staff is kind of like this game's charge blade without the guard points. It's all about charging up your gauges, morphing between different weapons, and unleashing a powerful attack. The bow within the game is basically the Monster Hunter World Bow, but in Instead of each shot doing damage, you're going to stack your damage on the monster and then pop it for huge burst damage. The Karakuri Katana is like the old school longsword from Monster Hunter Freedom to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, where the focus is on building up your spirit gauge to do huge chonky hits. Then you have the Maul, which will sort of take the place of the hammer, but this time you have a really fun mechanic with extending the handle, which gives you more range and power in your attacks. Next up, you need to know that in Wild Hearts, you don't really need to craft field items like you do in Monster Hunter, so you're not going to have things like potions and mega potions. Within the game instead, there are particular stations that are around the map, and these are usually located on sites where you can build camps. Because you can't freely craft additional potions, it's a good idea to go into your Karakuri tree and buy the upgrades that allow you to carry additional water which acts as your potions. By doing this, you'll have a higher maximum amount of potions at any one time. So, make sure to look out for those campsites because the trees on them will allow you to create a well so you can fast travel back and refill your water while you're out of combat. Next, as Monster Hunter players, we do love creating a good mix set. Well, the great thing to know is that in Wild Hearts you can do this once again as each weapon and armor has its own set of skills attached to it, but there's another layer on top of it that's quite different to Monster Hunter where some of these skills are locked behind modifying your armor to either extend into the human path or the kimono path. You can augment each piece of armor armor individually that you wear, but that will require additional materials, meaning you're going to have to farm a bit more. So ultimately, you can build these sets more to your playstyle and the particular skills that you want to unlock, 
and by doing these modifications, they also make you look more individual because they have different appearances as well. Next up, we all know that sitting at the canteen and eating a meal is a super important part of being successful in any Monster Hunter hunt. While the food system in Wild Hearts is slightly different in that players will need to grow, farm and look out for ingredients in a variety of different ways in order to get the buffs that they offer you. You don't really need to worry about getting food with particular health or damage buffs until the end game as you guys are all capable hunters so you won't need to worry about it too much until you get to the super hard versions of the monsters. But what I would suggest is that you pick up every single food item you see on the ground because it will be super useful later on. Next is something that us Monster Hunter players aren't going to initially be used to, and that's the building within the game, the Karakuri. This is a fundamental part of the combat in Wild Hearts, and you may initially think of it being something like Fortnite, but in actuality and in the gameplay, it actually functions more like switch skills or weapon arts, so we would say to make sure that you're actually using and weaving these into your combos in order to perform better in a hunt. One thing to know in particular is that most weapons when jumping off of a triple stacked crate actually results in a special big attack, so you definitely want to be using these in combat. Another thing to know is that mounting is very different in this game. It can actually be done at any time, and what you need to do is run and jump onto the monster itself, and this will allow you to crawl around them kind of like you can in Dragon's Dogma. From here you can plant stakes that will deal damage to the monster and debuff them, and you can even use a thing called your hunter's arm which will allow you to pull on one of the glowing spots that will refill your threads that allow you to build more things. Because of this hunter's arm buff that gives you a higher amount of Karakuri threads, this allows you to create more things like the fusion Karakuri we mentioned earlier that are super helpful. And next up, you need to know that the game has a system similar to decorations. Within this one, you have a thing called talismans, and this will give you a variety of skills on them just like your armor sets will come with. we found that some of the best ones to use early games so far are ones that give you status effects on your weapons such as poison, as they usually prop more often than you think they would, but when it comes to the best of the best talismans, this is probably going to change as we get more into the end game and as more people play it. So we hope this was super helpful for you Monster Hunter veterans. Make sure to tell us in the comments down below if you have any more tips to share, and you can support this video by clicking like down below and subscribing so you don't miss out on the next one. The two videos on screen now we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this. Of course you don't have to watch it if you don't want to, but if you found this one helpful or interesting you should probably check these two out. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.